Adopting courseware into a program doesn't automatically lead to improved student success. Having an impact often requires careful planning and a strong partnership with the courseware vendor. We spoke with National Lewis University and their courseware vendor, Acrobatic, about the first key to a successful partnership, a strong vision of the overall program design. So National Lewis University is a private nonprofit university that's been around for 130 years, and it's always been very committed to uh, serving underserved students and to community impact. And as part of that mission, we launched a new undergraduate program in fall of 2015 called the Pathways Program. And the Pathways Program is NLU's effort to uh, redefine undergraduate education, really, really re-envision how we can do undergraduate education more effectively and more affordably uh, for underserved students. And what Pathways is, is it is a, an undergraduate bachelor's degree program for first-time, full-time freshmen uh, right out of high school. And it is designed from the ground up to directly address the reasons that uh, so many students who could be successful in college aren't enrolling in college at all um, and or are enrolling and not completing college. And so with that in mind, uh, we've designed a program that's extremely affordable. It's $10,000 a year and we've design we're designing to be self-sustaining at scale at that price point, meaning our cost model has to fit within that price point per student. Um, and we have a variety of wraparound supports built in as well. It's important to have a good sense of which educational problems the courseware can solve and which problems need to be addressed through other means. You know, for example, two of the, the problems they were trying to solve and they were looking to the technology to help them um, were, number one, flexibility. These students just can't come to campus the same number of days. They're going to be here one day. Uh, and so we have to be able to deliver more edu core knowledge, core foundational content uh, away from the classroom, uh, including uh, all the reading and, and homework and things that they might traditionally do. It all has to happen outside the classroom. Um, and they saw digital courseware uh, as, as, a, as a vehicle for that, which I think is quite correct. <laughs> they also said that when they do those things, um, there is this new opportunity uh, afforded by, by these kinds of platforms to gather really rich data about what the learner's doing and how well they're doing it. So that when they come to class, um, we have such little time with them, we need that time to be as um, effective and enriching as possible. And so we want to know before they get here, um, did they do the work? Uh, did they not do the work? If they did the work, do they appear to be struggling with something? What is it that we need to be doing with them, both in the aggregate as a class and also at the level of each individual um, that will make that face-to-face that -face time um, as useful as possible. And so an instructor can go in, a professor can go in, let's say the class is Monday afternoon, uh, they can go in Sunday night, they can go in Monday morning and look at the analytics dashboard and see exactly where every student in their class is. And that's really useful for the class time because to be able to come into class and know where students are on the skills that you're going to teach it's a, it's a gift because it allows you to not spend time working with students on concepts that they have already mastered. Um, and what they didn't think it could do so well is they didn't think it could help with all the affective aspects of, of what they were dealing with, with, with you know, potentially um, uh, uh, poor study skills, with um, significant academic gaps um, uh, that they needed to identify. Uh, with just the emotional aspect of being maybe the first one in your uh, family to ever go to college and not really knowing how to, how to get through that experience. Um, all of those, uh, those things which were uh, incredibly important for them to solve for, they recognized they had to do through um, high-touch uh, interactions with faculty, with coaches, and others 
Yeah, we really use it as formative assessment, and it's not the only formative assessment that we use. We also use a variety of formative assessment inside of the class in person, but we really use it as formative. They are taking the majority of their quizzes inside of Acrobatic, and they're also doing their Apply What You Know, which also gives us some knowledge on how many attempts they need to get to that concept, how much time they're spending on each concept, uh, and then we're able to kind of look at each of the classes and say all right there's a group of students here that are really needing that there's a group of students here that have mastered that and then when they get into class we can use additional formative assessments to measure there but we have built in a variety of summative assessments as well because for us we really needed signature work we needed signature assignments and uh, we use the degree qualifications profile and so when we were building the courses we looked at the gems best practices and um, we also looked at DQP and said we need signature assignments so that these students can really demonstrate all the levels of blooms. You know, when they first described the program to us, um, uh, it, was, it was just really exciting because to me, in some respects, it's sort of the ultimate uh, use case of what I think, uh, you know, the power of, of, of this kind of um, learning optimization kind of technology uh, can really do. I mean, they, they, you know, they were, they were uh, intentionally targeting um, highly disadvantaged learners, first generation college goers, um, uh, students who were um, uh, at the very, very lowest end of the, um, uh, the income spectra. Um, they were um, students who had low uh, uh, GPAs, lower than, than most institutions would allow in. Uh, they didn't care what ACT scores you had because they didn't believe they were predictive of college success. Uh, and so they really intentionally targeted this group of students and they said, in order to do that, we're going to have to have a business model which supports their ability to afford to come here. We're going to have to have a, an educational model which has flexibility that allows them to do a lot more away from school uh, because they don't have the time to spend on campus that a traditional student might. And we're going to have to have a much more um, supportive environment um, to really help uh, these students um, uh, succeed. And, Data is going to play a role in that for us. So, so it was sort of like for me checking off uh, all of these boxes of what an excellent customer and use case would look like. Mm -hmm.